Today I'll update you on changes to the configurations and also new parameters for DirectOut's Prodigy MP audio processor. And if you've followed other videos, you'll know that we will be using WaveBoard typically for this device. We have a default configuration here that maps um, 32 channels onto a WaveBoard. You have paging on the um, left side here and that basically moves the motorized faders around. And if you have watched my videos, you see that I prefer to do videos with um, just like a, a screen version of our panels. This will work just as well on real panels because we have amazing emulation tools that will give you uh, a, a very exact view of what a physical panel will do. But it's so much more convenient when I don't have the panel on the desk next to me and also being able to make a quick screencast like this. So it's... Um, an attractive form of communication for me. And what you see on the waveboard is the first page having the flex channels from the Prodigy MP. Then on the second page, we have the summing buses. Then we have a mix here between um, four master channels and four input channels for, I believe this would be the 16 by four mad mix. And then finally the um, eight by eight mad mix over here. So uh, for those of you who know, about um, Prodigy MP, you know, the Globcon software will often be very uh, helpful, uh, if not even uh, absolutely mandatory to, to manage this. And this is uh, the flex channels you see. Uh, we have the mad mixes over here, the um, yeah, the 16 by four and the eight by eight, and finally the summon buses over here. So let's look at the changes we have done. So I assume that you have already been looking at the first videos that present the overall thing. Uh, inside of those videos, you'll know that we have this channel configuration that basically, this is where you are basically mapping any number of channels that you want to page through. And you see the first eight ones are flex channel configuration. So this is a reference to a bit of configuration that basically decides what does the fader do, the, the three buttons, just notice the faders uh, each each channel on the waveboard has a fader, motorized fader. It has a VU meter display, and uh, it has three buttons, and then it has also an encoder on top. And the the configuration of what those five elements um, are doing will be in these configurations. So when we choose flex channel, these parameters over here are basically information about which flex channel is it, and also, it, so in this case, that is the parameter called channel right here. If we move on, we can see we have the summing buses here for device ID number one, that is the uh, device we see up here. And then the summing buses selected are one through eight, but we have up to like 32, so you can just pick that from the list basically, and you could have any of these summing buses selected if you want. Then finally, we are moving on to the next eight, which are the Mad Mix 16 by four outputs and then four of the inputs. And in this case, we need to take into account additional columns. The matrix mixer needs to be chosen by this parameter and then the master and channel. Now, in this case, the master is sort of, uh, yeah, it's being used to indicate which master is being used on the um, uh, Mad Mix here. We have from... Globcon, you know that we have uh, four masters in the 16 by four, 16 inputs and four masters. And here you have eight masters and eight inputs. And that is facilitated in this configuration here. You can also see you can color code this and those colors are actually the background color that you get in as a background color of the fader on the waveboard and also the background color on the uh, buttons and on the uh, top notes, uh, knobs. So the changes we have done is we have moved around a little bit um, the uh, functions of these keys. So that's the first thing. The lower button is now solo on all of these. And the upper buttons will be, uh, in this case, it's a, a reset to 0 dB. And then up here, we have a mute function. So that's the general pattern you'll find. Mute on top, solo on bottom, and then we have a reset to 0 dB on this button. This is the change we've made. Obviously, we can still move the fader as we want. <clears throat> and you can also see we have VU metering here. So this is actually really cool because we can now go over to Globcon, find the flex channel that we are working with. And that turns out to be this very first one here. So you can see if I'm if I'm changing this inside uh, Globcon, then of course it's reflected over here and vice versa. If I change it here, which is going to be a little more difficult for me to illustrate, but let's just try it anyway. So if I change the fader here, then you can see it's it's going both ways. Now, if I solo this, it's soloed. If I mute this, it's muted. If I unmute it and unsolo it, you also see those effects. Actually, one thing that has been implemented 
is uh, that soloing can happen um, both on the, depending on whether the source is input and output. This is a, a more, hmm, kind of advanced setting. You need to know the Prodigy MP and Globcon, I guess, um, but flex channels can be input or output, and that um, will determine how the solo function functions uh, inside of Globcon. Now, in our case, this is something that is um, embedded inside our integration now. So I can uh, just quickly show you if you go here and uh, to the direct out device call, edit that, open the parameter list, then you see all the parameters that we are having. And if we look at the flex channels, you can see that we have uh, something called uh, flex input solo here. And we also have one called solo output down here. So this is for the input solo function and this is for the output solo function. So you can have both and you need to map them accordingly. That was probably a little bit advanced information for some of you guys. But anyway, I assume that you're looking at this because you are interested. Sorry about this view over here. I'll just go back to my simulator right here. All right, let's move on to, um, to the summing buses. So on the summing buses, we have the same pattern again. We have the, the reset function here. We have also um, a mute function. Now, solo is not available on summing buses. Um, but the interesting thing is if we move on to um, here where we have the mad mixes, then we actually also have solo, which we have had for a while. But now we have something new, which is really unique, which is solo for the inputs. And that would require a little bit of explanation for you guys, because you might wonder, hmm, there is no solo for inputs on the mad mixes. We have solo over here, but we don't have solo here. So how are you doing that? Well, uh, first of all, solo is in any case a matter of routing summing buses. This is the assignment over here. So for instance, look at this. If I solo on Mad Mix 1A, 16 by 4, if I solo that one, then if you go to the, mm, let me see, summing buses routing, and then you can go to this one, you see that actually the, um, the first mix, Mix 1 Master A, is routed to bus 31 and 32. That's how it is done inside of uh, Globcon here. So um, the, the way we do it for the inputs then is actually in a similar way. It's something that Globcon does it on top of what Prodigy MP offers already. And we do it on top of what Prodigy MP offers already. So the, the way I would solo this channel is basically to look up which source is routed to this channel, and then I'm soloing that on the summing bus. Let's try that out. But first, let's see what source is routed to mix one source here. So we will go to DSP routing, and then we'll go to Mad Mix one And uh, basically, we would have to go through these to just see, hmm, OK, which one is routed here? And do we have network routed to it? Actually, it seems like we have nothing. OK, let's just pick. Slot number two, DL9. Let's take that one and route that to the first source and then this one to the second. Okay, so remember that slot two, DL9 and 10 is now routed to Mad Mix 1, Mix 1 and Mix 2, or Mix 1, Source 1 and 2. Okay, in other words, these two um, are now having those routed. So if I go over here and it just happens to be the sources that um, I have mapped to these two channels here. This is something that we could check out in the home screen. Uh, basically, in this table, this is what is being defined right here. So if we look in this table, and make the screen a little wider, then we should see it in here. But uh, trust me for now on this. And then let's see if we can do this side by side. We can zoom in a little bit on this one. Just let's pinch zoom slightly. First of all, I want to make sure that we agree that we are actually looking at those channels. So I'll just move the faders so that you can see it. Yes, and the mute functions are in place. Okay, so if I do the solo functions on these, then what we should see if we go over to the summing buses and we go to slot number two is that DL9 is actually being soloed as I'm doing this, you see? and. If I solo this one, the other one is because I was looking up that this source was um, the that particular source on slot number two, and that is the one that I'm now routing to some bus 31 and 32. So that's um, that's a pretty unique feature that we have added here, and um, I think that's um, a 
welcomed feature for many of you guys. I also want to highlight that actually up here, you see the labels coming out of the mad mixes. So uh, except, yeah, that's a little trick here. Now, uh, let me just show you if we go to mad mix um, um, again, and I edit the label, then let's just uh, edit it to 11. And you see that this label is now updated up here. So you can really use um, the labels already inside of Prodigy MP and then have them broken out here. But if you if you press these encoders and pressing them will toggle the course mode, that means as you are using the encoders, you are adjusting the value in one dB steps. If you are in fine mode, which is default, then you do it in 0.1 uh, uh, dB steps. And uh, but at the same time, I decided to take that toggle between coarse and fine mode and use that as a way to toggle to a more technical description of this label. Namely, this is the input for MadMix 16 by 4 mix number one, um, master number one, channel number three. <laughs> That's what we're seeing here. So uh, I I used that in a clever way to uh, to give you both options of uh, you know what labels you want to see, but assuming that you prefer to have the label from the um, channels uh, by default. The final thing I want to highlight is that we have uh, implemented a mode inside of Reactor that will help the faders to not move linearly with your values. And what that means is, uh, as an example, if we go to the summing buses here, then um, in the previous configuration, uh, if you move the fader to zero dB, it would actually be pretty close to this point. And that is because the range from minus 144 up to plus 18 dB would justify zero being around this, this point. But if you go to the uh, software and the way the software has um, decided to uh, place 0.0, .0 that it's actually adjusted by a power curve. So as you're moving this towards the end, to, towards minus infinity, basically, which is the minus 144, then uh, it is uh, accelerating a little bit on the values at the end here. And that means that now the, the way the fader on the actual waveboard moves, zero dB is going to be a little bit lower. And that is a power curve that can be adjusted. But right now I feel it's pretty close to what Globcon is doing. So I'm assuming that this would be fine with most people. But that's an improvement inside of Reactor in the most recent pre-release that will help you guys to uh, to have fader movement that can compensate for uh, how, how a, a logarithmic value range like dB is uh, is being handled. It's I, I don't find this as being an exact science. It is somewhat a, a preference and there are many ways that you can adjust uh, fader ranges uh, in reactors. So there are many approaches to it, but I think this would be the most popular one. So with all these things, I thank you for watching this video on updates on Prodigy MP and um, the uh, new parameters we have implemented, including um, also the uh, input solo function, which is a unique meta function that we have added on top of what is like coming straight out of the Prodigy MP's API in itself. All of this is controlling Prodigy MP without Globcon. We're not using Globcon. I'm just having Globcon on the side in this video so that you have a chance to uh, to see how the changes on the panel is reflected in the software that you're probably used to using. Thanks for watching.